Okay, so where, where does this new imperialism or two, uh, imperialism 2.0 occur? In, in places that we would consider poor nations of the world today. We don't, the political correctness police have attacked using the term poor. So when I was your age, we would say a, a third world country. Uh, it's not a term you hear very often because that's also been deemed um, not politically correct. Uh, the politically correct term for these kind of nations uh, in these areas of the world is, <laughs> is emerging nations. Uh, for the sake of argument, uh, I'm just going to call them poor nations because they are. A reason why a lot of nations are poor today is because they, didn't, they weren't in their first batch or first couple batches of nations to industrialize. When they failed to industrialize, they were picked on, imperialized by industrialized nations, and they've been playing catch-up ever since. Um, you know, the, we're going to take a close look at the continent of Africa in general. And the reason that that continent struggles uh, economically and socially today is because of what Europe did to that continent collectively. We're going we're gonna to get into that today. Why? <clears throat> Industrialized nations needed materials, raw materials, and sometimes labor for very, very cheap. And they, they stole it or took it at a very cheap price and then made finished goods with it and then exported them around the world. Some, some places were, were, were imperialized just for the sake of imperializing them. Well, when industrialized, richer nations had these rivalries, and they they oftentimes would would try to keep up with one another, try to top the other one, and eventually, um, so you just you run out of places on on the globe or on the map to to take over and to exploit. Moral authority and the desire to spread Christian values. These nations for the last 500 years have been using Christianity as one of the reasons to go out and explore. They certainly exported their religion wherever they went. Um, sometimes they did some bad things in the name of Christianity. Social Darwinism and racism, we're going we're gonna to get into that. We're going to understand what that means. Um, we'll talk about a concept known as the white man's burden and see some examples of that. But there was a racist element to it. There was an idea that, that white people were superior to dark-skinned people of the world. And this is what fuels and drives how Western nations treated these imperialized areas. Why does it matter today? Why are we studying this? Why does the state of Ohio think that this is worthwhile to study and to take time to study? Uh, because it's relevant. Okay? <clears throat> um, you know... Africa r remains collectively as a continent a place uh, with corrupt governments, with war, with civil war. In the Sudan, we've had a genocide of, of people. Genocide means killing people because of their ethnicity, their race, or their religion. Terrorism, many roots of terrorism can be traced back to the time of imperialism and and meddling in places, and then, and then leaving, and, and just leaving a power vacuum. And oftentimes the bad guys get to take over. Places like Vietnam, Libya, the Sudan, Somalia, these places, uh, northern um, African nations, v Vietnam is in Asia, but those are the last three. Northern African nations um, struggling with civil war, and um, who should run the government, what the government should look like, balancing that with terrorism and terrorists that are in their country who have perverted um, the peaceful religion of, of Islam. And a lot of the trouble spots in the world today um, just so happen, I'm being, a, I'm being facetious with that, just so happen to be places that were imperialized. Okay? All right, so I'm going to hand these out. We're going to work through some primary sources. Some maps. And we're going to get to understand this concept of imperialism in great depth. Starting with 
the political cartoon on the cover of this. What is the benefit of a political cartoon? So on the cover there, you have a political cartoon regarding imperialism in Africa. Why, why, why do people use those? In general, not not that specific one, but why is it that almost every new major newspaper around the world has a person on salary who gets paid to create things like that to this day? Molly. Okay, they don't sugarcoat things. They tell it how it is. It's certainly true. There's an opinion in there. There's no doubt about that. Good. So the author of this political cartoon and other political cartoons in general do sprinkle in their opinion. So they do it to tell an opinion. There's no doubt about it. What's the value of a picture? Yeah. Yeah, it does make it more clear. There's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Have you ever heard that before? Okay. Absolutely. It gives us a snapshot of what's going on and then that author's opinion. So I want you to do that. Take a couple of minutes, practice what what's going on in that picture. Okay, and we're gonna we're I'm gonna give you two minutes and then we're gonna have a quick two minute class discussion about it. Ready? Go. Feel free to talk with the people around you, collaborate. Well, it does say Africa, it's just not in English. Okay. You got to figure it out, do you? All right, good. What do you think, Gracie? Yeah, good. Y'all got figured out? Morgan, you got figured out? That means no. When the eyes get big. What does it mean? We think that it's spreading rights. No. Definitely not. Quite the opposite. All right, so let's bring you to class. Good job, good discussion. A lot of you are in the, in right, at least in the right neighborhood, if not on the proper street. What does this mean? What does this political cartoon mean? Anna? That guy that's like cutting the cake and he's like dividing it. He's like dividing Africa. Good, he is dividing Africa. You mean the, um, the other like, Right, and, and, and who. who what and and or who do those men represent in that picture? The other countries. The other countries. And we can infer that means what, Molly? They're wealthy. And they're what? They're wealthy because they're industrialized, which means they're geographically from what part of the world? The what continent? Europe. Europe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Um... Anybody have an idea of what nation the guy standing at the table cutting the cake up? Anybody have any idea what nation he's from? There is a, a clue in here. And if you don't know what nation, can you tell me what the clue is? 
His necklace, yes. Does anybody know what that symbol, what nation that symbol represents? That symbol is called the Iron Cross, and it represents the nation of Germany. We're going to see that same symbol carried out in the, in the future conflicts that we're going to study in this class. Good. Um, how would you describe people's demeanor in that cartoon? Okay, there's a couple of cats there that have their mouths open, right? Which would communicate to us that they are shocked or in awe or surprised. Good, but there, other people are, not everyone has their mouth open. There's some guys on the left there. How would you describe their demeanor? Let me ask you this for sake of time. Is, is there, is there, is, is this meeting seem orderly or chaos? Really? How, how do you get that? What's the contextual evidence that there's chaos here? Are they throwing things at one another? Are they beating each other? Orderly. Orderly. Why, Anna? Um. You're right. Absolutely. Why, why does it seem orderly? John? They're evenly and people are calm and they're sitting and they're waiting. This represents what's known as the Berlin Conference, and we'll get into that tomorrow. Bell's about to ring. Have a great day.